G'day, it's a different look, but it's the same talk of the town team. And while the world is hurting at the moment, footy is not exempt. So we're going to take a look at the issues around the AFL world with the Chief Football Reporter of the Nine Network, Sam McClure. Sebastian, great to see you, albeit in stranger circumstances, but it's a strange world we live in at the moment, so it doesn't seem as weird. This is the normalcy of our lives now. It's very different, and the Premiership hero of the Port Adelaide Footy Club, Warren Treadray, and Treaders, I want to start straight with you. What are you making oh. of the way the players are playing the public issue of whether they should get their full fare, their full salary or not? Kidding themselves. Absolutely kidding themselves. Last time I checked, how many games we played? One. We need 23 more rounds, uh, well, 22 more uh, rounds and finals to go if we're going to get anywhere near what they expect. But I think they're really being smashed in the public forum here, boys, because the AFL has asked them for a pay cut. There's a lot of info coming out, being leaked out. I understand they're going to want to see the books. But unless the players take at least 50%, and you can say it's 50% at the moment, let's talk about it more, willing to negotiate, that's all well and good. But at the moment, they're sitting there going, oh, if I take 50% and I'm on a million bucks, I'm still on half a million dollars. Have they seen outside? I know a publican in Adelaide, not far from where I live uh, in tennis and not far from the old footy park. They march 200 staff. Um, we've seen Virgin march staff today. Everyone is losing their jobs. Pubs are shutting. Clubs are shutting. No one can do anything. We'll soon be in lockdown. And players are wondering about what percentage they're going to have. Let's face it. It's unlikely the season's going to go ahead. They need to lead the way on this. They can always work out the parameters of how much money in the pool. But if they don't take a cut, and this also goes with coaches, coaches offered up 20%. I know some have come out and offered up more. Chris Scott setting the agenda saying no pay for two weeks. But anyone, I think, who earns more than 300 grand in the game has to be willing to take a 50% cut. That includes players, that includes coaches, CEOs. The AFL executive has said, oh, we'll drop 20%. That's got to be more than 20%. The CEO is worth $1.7 I think, last time I saw. People need to realise this is going to fold and the game is going to be gone and people don't also realise that the name's Collingwood, Port Adelaide, Essendon, the colours, the designs. What are they owned by? They're owned by the AFL. If the business goes down, that all goes down with it. Step up, people. Woof, that's as strong as he's going to get. Treaders, I'm with you in a lot of this, but I think what's happening with the players is pretty symbolic of the times, and that is not only what's going on with the coronavirus, but we live in a time where every decision needs to be analysed and ticked off by 100% of the people within an inch of its life. So when the PA are trying to say that they're 800 delegates, you're going to take a 75% pay cut and we don't know when you'll be back to normal. You can imagine the alarm bells that go off within the players. Oh, I understand this is when, when leadership comes into it, but um, and the AFL need the money now. They're going to NAB, they're going to the, the CBA, they're going to ANZ, and they're saying, we want a loan of half a billion dollars, and the banks are saying, we need you to prove you're restructuring your business. So it's a complicated time for everyone. Oh, I don't, I'm not make, saying it isn't, but I think the uh, instigation needs to be led from the players because yep. I was a player to a don't worry, we're as tight as you'll get. They sit there and go, hey, what about all those blokes looking for free agency? In the off-season, they're going, oh, how many years can I get? Brad Crouch, for example, in Adelaide. Can I get four? Can I get five? Can I get 900? Can I get a mil? You know what? No one's getting anything until we sort this out. You can easily say to the AFL, we'll make whatever pay cuts we can. We even take 25% of our salary. Leave the, the low-end players who are on the bare minimum. Give them a small hit. And they'll go, we're in partnership with the game. Everything I heard recently about the CBA, we're in partnership with the game. Well, unfortunately, you're in partnership with the game. And unless someone gives a bit, let's face it, they're not going to get screwed over. The players aren't going to get screwed over. I think there needs to be a bit of intent to say, hey, we're here to work. And no doubt they are. But that message isn't getting out to the fans. And the people yep. are losing jobs who have still paid their memberships. That's what I'm saying. Get your PR campaign right. Say, we are willing to make this work instead of going, oh, it's been rejected. Oh, we want more. We need this game to go ahead. And right now, it ain't going ahead. So, Treaders, just to be clear, is your position that until games are played, if they are played, players should not receive any more salary? Well, no, not that. I'm saying work out your percentage. It's got to be at least 50%, 60%, 70% because they're not doing their job. Let's face it, at the moment, they're in four weeks of isolation. So they're effectively on holidays without pay. So if the big, mm -hmm. big for me is make a decision, get yourselves together, make a tough call, tell the players, boys, this is what's happening. Now, Paul Marsh, yeah. who I know very well, needs to go, boys, you don't understand the gravity of this. This is what's happening. Because you're not going to get caught out with loans and bits and pieces because banks are doing deal. I think they need to stand up, show the leadership and show the AFL the way, hey, we're going to do this with you. 
and we're willing to put whatever it is that's fair and reasonable to make this game go ahead. That, I think that's but fair and simple. The argument is, though, Trent, is for industries that are not going ahead, people have been stood down with that on a leave without pay. The aviation industry, for example, Absolutely. Qantas have said, we're not flying, so we can't pay you until we are. Is there an argument to say players were not playing, we can't pay you until we are? Well, I think there is maybe that argument, but there also is a future fund which the players have helped buy into too. So for me, who wants to sit on the, I work in media, yes, I was a player. The big bit for me is how do we make this go forward? The big bit that really, really, really hurts me is the people at the clubs who might have been the accounts payable at Collingwood or the community person at Port Adelaide, they haven't got a job. So let's put some perspective on this. It, it's pretty strong, Treaders. It's nearly as strong as Lee Matthews last night, who I've got to say, I mean, one of the greatest we've ever seen. But also, the AFL PA MVP is named after him. I mean, he's the one that presents to the trophy, to the MVP at the end of the year. It's become a pretty prestigious um, reward award, and he has always been, like you have, Treaders, a big advocate for the players. Well, that changed last night. Have a listen to what he had to say on Sports Day about his feelings with how the players are being throughout the negotiations. I mean, I was down on the... I've lost a lot of respect for the collective playing group over this last couple of weeks. Um, it's become too cumbersome. I wonder what player managers' roles are playing in this, Jerry. Yep. Because remember, every player's got a player manager. He's the main counsel for a player. Then you've got the AFL Players Association, who are the main conduit for the collective playing group with the AFL. But the, the PA only negotiate the uh, salary caps. They don't, don't negotiate individual contract so it's really unwieldy lee matthews there on 3aw sam you were conducting that interview what were you thinking as those words were coming out of the mouth of the greatest to ever do it yeah well i, I honestly i nearly fell off my chair because you know lee doesn't speak like that very often and you know some people have reputations for always wanting to try to get a headline lee is the opposite like when he speaks everyone seems to go oh that makes sense lee just said this that, that, that that's clarified it for me now for him to say that, given his his usual position about how he is um, with the players, I, I think it, you know, it it really put people on notice. Um, and I think that a lot of the players, and I agree with Treaders um, in the sense of maybe they're not being represented in the way that a lot of the 800 should be, aren't understanding the gravity of where the game is at. The TV money has stopped. The games have stopped. There is no more revenue in the pool. The AFL is bleeding cash and they need to be able to get this line of credit for the banks to hold the game up so that we do have games next year. I think it's going to take a whole lot more than 50% for eight weeks. What about Chris Scott? Talk of people setting an example. Uh, Sammy, Chris Scott, the Geelong coach, announcing that he will not be taking a cent in 2020. Yeah, well, I mean, Tred is. I'd love to hear his thoughts on this because he just talked about leadership. I mean, that, that's that's what the, the Geelong coach is doing. I mean, I, I do still feel a little for the players who are expected. And, you know, I, I saw an, an Instagram story of, of Max Gorn taking his dog and taking a footy and taking, you know, a couple of exercise balls down to the local park today. They still want to stay fit. They still want to start, stay in tip-top condition. So it's not as though they're sitting on the couch like a lot of us are at the moment. I know a lot of people are working from home, but it's not a full-blown holiday. Um, but Tread is a, a pretty selfless act by one of the biggest names in the game in Chris Scott, given that he's not just a senior coach, but also, you know, a, such a, a great player in his time. Yeah, and also, too, anyone who knows him personally, I was lucky to go to Ireland with him, and he's a ripping person. And what I saw yesterday, I went, wow, that's great. He's probably on close to a million bucks, but that doesn't yep. matter. He's probably in that fortunate position where he is able to do that, other than some people who are living paycheck to paycheck. But you know what? That's what I'm talking about, leadership. That's what I'm talking about. The players should have taken the onus. Because when I sat back late last week and saw 20% from the AFL executive and coaches, I go, well, what's coaches? Average of seven, dollars $800,000? It didn't seem enough for me. You know, and there's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But if we, you've got to sit the game, here's the game, and work back from how we get the game to continue. And he was a wonderful example, which I was hoping the players would do. You're hearing some crazy stories at the moment, rumours of senior footy people who you'd recognise who, you know, have taken uh, retail jobs 
to, to get through in supermarkets and that sort of thing. The industry is changing. But there are some good stories if you look for them. And one of them is this tweet. We'll flash it up in a sec. It comes from Heath O'Loughlin, the North Melbourne media manager, uh, just showing a, a North Melbourne fan, a passionate North Melbourne person who's volunteered to buy, you know, half a dozen or five memberships in order to support his club. It's, it's a nice move, Sam. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, that's Jake Walsh there, who uh, was a very good footballer himself and in the Amara A grade for Old Trinity. Worked at North Melbourne for a long time um, in their media and, and advertising department. And is actually the son of Jeff Walsh, who is okay. uh, the, the Collingwood head of football and you know right. one of the one of the closest allies to Nathan Buckley. So I think. Uh, Jake's moved overseas to take a job in the US and uh, still dipping into his own pocket. So it was a really nice story. Yeah, a bit of backstory. Sammy McClure knows everyone in the industry. Treaders, how has Gil McLaughlin performed? I think he's done as well as he could have. I think he tried to get the game going. He got it going for a... a and, and really, it, it's out of his control. I thought he's actually, for a bloke who cops it, and I think we all get a – we're all media for people here. We want to pick and analyse all the little intricacies. I think he's done a pretty good job considering. Yeah, should they go onto the field? I don't know. I still watch um, ScoMo not long ago did another press conference and he said that kids are still going to school. Yeah, you know, my kids are still at school. Yeah, you know, Victoria I know is very different. Yeah, you know, this is a juggling a massive beast. I thought Gil McLaughlin played his role wonderfully well and – um, I think he realised that when it was time to end it, he, he stood up like a decent leader and showed the way. Agree with that. No, Gil's been brilliant and in really difficult circumstances. And, you know, you can see a lot of those people, the club presidents as well, they're bearing the burden of these job losses of, of people who they love and people who they care about who are now suddenly without work and without income. And, and you know, and that's, that's obviously a difficult position to be in. So Gil, shouldering all that, well done. Hey, I want to talk about the way that Australian rules football for a short period, Australian rules football for a short period was the only sport being played in the world. And we got the attention of, uh, of one former NFL player uh, in Pat McAfee, who uh, used to play for the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, mate, he was right into this game, Sammy. He's a Bomber fan now too. Yeah, well, of course he is. After they got over the line, I'm sure it would have been a Dockers <laughs> fan had, that, had they not have. But uh, it's unbelievable to think that, you know, we're talking about our great game here and it's our Indigenous game and, and we love it. But you look around the world, I mean, London's gone into further lockdown that talks about the English Premier League not being back for six months. That's one of the biggest leagues in the world. And then, of course, in the States, the NBA and the NFL, all their leagues have just shut down. So for uh, the spotlight to be on us, even for a small amount of time, is uh, pretty significant. I'll read one of the tweets uh, quickly, Treaders. Don't think this game could get more electric than the ball went out. <laughs> Bounds. He loves the throw-ins. He said this. Oh, no. Is this, this the is second ridiculous. greatest sport on earth? He says the second greatest. Are we happy with that, Treaders? Uh, no, it's clearly the greatest. And Correct. the problem is, other than an American, does it surprise you, considering their leader is Donald Trump, and I don't get political at all, but he <laughs> highlights a boundary umpire. <laughs> really? No, I, I'm completely with him here, Treaders. I'm completely with him. We, we, we ruined the game with deliberate out of bounds. We ruined the game. I'll go back to more throw ins. I'm happy with it. Oh. All right, guys. Uh, the Social Club. So every week we uh, induct a new member of the Talk of the Town Social Club for a player who has uh, really extended themselves and taken social media to uh, the next level. And uh, he, look, Patrick Dangerfield is a wonderful media performer. He's had an interesting day today uh, talking on behalf of the players as this, uh, you know, this salary situation goes on. But have a look at what Paddy Dangerfield has been up to. Gary, who we saw it? Paddy Dangerfield having some fun uh, with Gary Ablett, uh, just really taking things quite seriously, so, as we should, I suppose, uh, Sam. <laughs> So he is now Gary Ablett, only the second person in the world, in the history of the world, after Tom Hardy in Batman that makes a mask look good. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable the little masters are the best at everything. Hey, uh, Trent, uh, Paddy yes. Danger into the social club. Has anything caught your eye on social media recently? Uh, yeah, I'm glad you asked me, Seb, because when the world is falling apart, coronavirus is shutting everything down, people are losing their jobs, people are fighting over toilet paper, our own mate, Sam McClure, is eating oysters. Oh, that's uh, right. Hang on. This is on my run here. <laughs> this is that, not on my run here. Sam, that's, is that, that, that is that's, unfair. That's been Photoshopped, Sam. That, that is un unfair. 
Shuck- he, reposted, he reposted oysters. it on his story. Shuckling oh, oysters. I had a I had a lovely lovely Saturday afternoon and a well deserved break just just for an hour just to get away and you'll see from the photo no one else was around Treaders I was keeping my social distance you know what this is oh, unbelievable you, this was not on my rundown you were in, you were in isolation I'm only highlighting because there were there's only two there <laughs> All right, well, I think this will be the time. Uh, Sammy McClure shucking oysters. Uh, Tammy, oh. Thank you very much. These are trying circumstances. And from the Channel 9 family to your family watching this, we are thinking of you and anybody uh, who's going through some tough times at the moment. Sam McClure, the Chief Football Reporter for the Nine Network. Thank you. Thanks, Seb. Stay well, everyone. And the Premiership Champion of Port Adelaide, Warren Treadray from Nine News Adelaide. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next week on Talk of the Town.